guys, I am back, and Matt might be able to join me. I know he has uh, another interview, so he might be able to join us. I am so, I truly apologize. I came back on because it is so important for me to answer your questions that you took the time to send in. I'm so, so sorry that, um, that I have, there's a very bad storm here and the alarm keeps going off. And so I am so, so sorry. Uh, let me just get to the questions that people sent in, okay? Because otherwise I won't be able to um, live with myself. I won't be able to sleep tonight, seriously. Um, it really touches my heart that you guys join us and that you, have, you take the time to send in questions. So the first question that somebody sent in during the live is um, raw, raw salt versus cooked salt. Take, um, uh, take everything with exactly one grain of salt. Okay, that's, I don't know if that's a question, but that's pretty cool. Uh, next, ever had hemp sprouts better than hemp hearts? Uh, okay, so no, I've never had hemp sprouts, but hemp hearts, definitely. And I always, and I wanna get Matt's opinion on this, but I always recommend the um, unhulled. I don't know if that is the ones we should be eating. Maybe Matt will join us, I don't know. Okay, um, next is, um, wow, I've never seen, uh, I've seen a lot of exotic fruit, but never these. Hmm, what was that about? Um, I know you aren't advocating, uh, 40 asked, I know you aren't advocating of fasting, but do you think a 5-2 fasting on a raw vegan diet would be recommended or would work? 5-2 fasting, 40, can you please join so that you can um, clarify your question because I'm not quite sure that um, I'm not quite sure that question. What what does five two mean? Hmm. Okay. Let me get to the questions that people sent in um, from the week. Okay. So we have a Q and A section, um, and uh, I was thinking maybe Matt will join me, but okay, maybe not. I don't know. Um, so the first question was from Jesse, and this is such a great question, Jesse. The question was, best advice to go raw with a family who isn't? This is such a good question because so many people are going to not even try to eat raw because of who they live with or what their family eats or how they have to cook for their family. Such a good question. So my question to you, Jesse, would be, is there anything that you do that your family doesn't do? Forget about food for a second. Is there anything that you do that your family doesn't do? Okay. Um, just see food as the same thing. There are some things that you do, okay? Maybe it's yoga or meditate or go to school or I don't know, your job, responsibilities. Uh, see food as the same way. There are some things that you're going to do that your family are not going to do. And so I want you to see this challenge as an opportunity, okay? An opportunity, what's up, Anne? Thank you for coming back, sorry about that. An opportunity to get mentally tough. Okay, you have been given an opportunity to get mentally tough. And there is a book that I highly recommend. It's called Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Okay, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. This book will definitely help change your life, your perspective, and um, it will make you completely uh, into a different person. In fact, the person that you really want to be. So Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. I would recommend the audiobook personally, but the book itself is amazing too. And, um, and by the way, there is no enemy on the outside if there is no enemy on the inside. So we're going to have to start becoming our own best friend and starting to make choices that we really want. And so what I would recommend to you is sit down with your family and let them know, hey, I'm on this journey, this healing journey, and I would like to not eat certain foods. Is it possible that we could not keep those in the house? Okay, that's setting your boundaries, and that's really important on your healing journey because you're not just going to start eating healthier. You're going to start becoming a different person, somebody who stands up for themselves, somebody who sets their boundaries, somebody who prioritizes themselves first. Okay, and so if your family cannot respect your boundaries, then 
drop them. No, <laughs> you know, you know, you got to do something. Something's got to change. Okay. So you're going to have to demand that they respect your boundaries, maybe for the first time in your life. And that's very hard. Very, very, very hard. Okay. Um, so I wrote, if you can't resist the temptation of unhealthy food your family might keep in the house, if that is an issue, then I want you to realize and repeat over and over again, over again, okay, to start to reprogram your subconscious mind. I am in complete control. I am in complete control of everything I eat. That's your new mantra. I am in complete control of everything I eat, okay? And um, when I am hungry, I eat what my body wants, which is fruit and vegetables. You're going to have to start with the mind because the mind is controlling the entire reality that you call your life. Your mind is in control. It's not the food. What's up, spirit doctor? It's not the food, as spirit doctor knows. It's the mind. The subconscious is running the show, and we're going to have to reprogram it. So affirmations, I love eating healthy. Um, you know, I'm in control of everything I eat, say, and do, okay? And, you know, when you start to say these affirmations, what's up, Lynn? What's up, boo? They will start to work on your subconscious. Next question, okay? Um, because, by the way, your subconscious is running the show. You're not running the show, all right? Your subconscious is allowing you to continue to make choices that you do not want to make. So we have to stop, do something new, we can't just keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. It's not going to happen. Choose what is hard now and you will have an easier life later. Choose what is hard, easy now and you will have a harder life later. Where's Matt? Mm, I'm lonely. <laughs> I thought Matt might be joining me. What's up, 40? What's up? I answered your questions in the beginning of this. I wanted to say so, so sorry that I had to leave. The alarm was going crazy. And can somebody tell Matt to join me? I miss Matt. Um, I told him I was going live. I thought I did. Well, I don't know what happened. What did I miss? I'm answering all the questions. And can, can you go to Matt's page and tell him I'm live? <laughs> Just kidding. I, I told him. Okay, next question is from Blink of an Eye. I love that name, Blink of an Eye. How much do you spend each month on food? It's so expensive to eat raw vegan. Okay. Um... I want to answer this question from my experience. Number one, it can be very expensive to eat raw vegan. Absolutely. If you're eating durian and jackfruit and mame sapote and you're eating lots of expensive, you know, you know, organic everything or you're eating out at these, uh, you know, raw vegan restaurants, yes, it can be very, very, very expensive. However, it can also be very cheap. And you can also start to save money on other things, okay? So you can save money on eating out. You can save money on alcohol. You can save money on skincare, on makeup, because you're not gonna need makeup because you're eating healthy and your natural beauty is gonna shine through. You can, um, thank you, Forty, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Wow, that's so nice of you. You are gonna start to save money in other aspects of your life so that you can spend the money on other things like fruit and vegetables, okay? delicious, high-quality fruit and vegetables. Um, and so uh, I really appreciate this question, but this question is not the truth. The truth is any lifestyle can be expensive. Any lifestyle can be cheap, okay? And so I want you to know that um, you make it so. He who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. If you want it to be expensive, you can make it expensive. If you want it to be cheap, you can make it cheap. Um, I used to spend a lot of money on doctor visits. Ooh, 40, that's a synchronicity. I used to spend a lot of money on doctor visits, prescription pills, on over-the-counter stuff. Now that money goes to fruit and vegetables. So it's all about perspective. Where is the money going? Where is your money going? And perhaps maybe your money needs to go to a juicer instead of another drug. Just a thought. Just a thought. Let's keep an open mind. Um, okay. So my uh, the next question is, well, somebody also asked how to do this on a budget. Focus on things like bananas, apples. Um, oranges, the cheap fruits, and don't buy organic. You don't need organic. You just need to start somewhere. You know, pr conventional produce is way better. Conventional produce is way better than processed food. So if you cannot afford, if you cannot, oh, there's Matt. 
I don't know if he has time to join me. Well, request and I'll, I'll, I'll let you in, boo. What's up? Um, don't make excuses. Get a, get a result. Okay. So conventional produce is way better than processed food. If you cannot afford to eat organic, that's okay. Do what you can. Use what you have. Oh, that's going to join. <laughs> no, because it's like hard to, um, that. I'm used to having a co-host, co you know what I'm saying? Um, and so, yeah, this is good. <laughs> I answered most of the questions, though. Thank you, Matt. Hey, we're back. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Matt. It's very, I realize I don't like going live without you now. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I missed my co-host. Okay. <laughs> but um, we had some really good questions, and I appreciate your time, Matt. I know you don't have yeah. all day. Yeah, my so, pleasure. The next question that somebody had, I answered a few questions, but somebody had, uh, what do you do at restaurants and social settings? Okay. Mm. Oh, so, like, this is probably like one of the hardest aspects of the, the lifestyle. And so what do you do when you, when you have a social event or you go to restaurants? Well, I take the advice of my good friend, Jeanette, and say, you know, I embrace being a fruity weirdo, right? So I embrace <laughs> this lifestyle and I, I wear it proudly. So I will bring, you know, a bunch of fruit with me or, or I will, so, a good thing that I think most people should do is they should eat before they go to any sort of restaurant or social gathering, um, you know, and that way, even if you do eat something while you're out, you're, there's a better chance you're going to make a good decision. Whereas if you go out and you're really hungry and you're just like, your stomach is gurgling and you're just like, all right, I'm just going to eat something that's not even on your usual, you know, in your usual menu. So yeah, I think it's good to eat before you go, but then also you want to embrace this lifestyle. You want to be proud of doing what is best for yourself and, and really understand, you know, you, you know that this is the best food that you can fuel your body with. So be proud of that. And, and if somebody asks you, you know, just say that that's, that's what you want to do. You know, don't, if, if you have trouble with like um, confrontation or like, you feel like you're going to get into a debate with somebody you don't want that to happen um then just you know don't really bring it up you don't have to like promote the lifestyle you can just eat before you go and maybe have like a a little side salad or something when you go to the restaurant but um yeah my advice is for most people just embrace it and you know it's a great way to you know bring up different conversations with people and you know as long as they can have a, a civil conversation with you, it's, uh, it's, it's always a good time to, to open people's eyes to this lifestyle. Yes, I completely agree. Embrace your weirdness. That's the key to your success as well, guys. Okay, whatever you are obsessed with, that is what is going to lead you to the, the success and the happiness that you desire in life. You know, Grant Cardone has a great book, Matt. I don't know if you've read it yet, but it's called Be Obsessed or Be Average. Yeah. Yeah. So have you read that book? No, I haven't, but I do. <laughs> I, I do plan to one day. <laughs> so, so I, this is one of my favorite books and I highly recommend it to everybody here um, because it helped me start to embrace who I really was and what mm -hmm. I was really obsessed with. And that's why I got a watermelon tattoo. And I just wanted everyone to know that I have a watermelon tattoo. Matt does not. So who is <sighs> Ellen uh, aficionado? I think mm -hmm. it's. Um, so uh, 40 is here and he had a great question, but I didn't understand it. And so I wanted to get Matt's advice on that. So um, 40 asked, um, what do you think of 5-2 fasting schedule on a raw vegan diet? And I didn't know what 5-2 meant, but he just explained five days five. of eating, two days of fasting. Mm -hmm. Matt, what do you think about this? Uh, I mean, I don't know if that's, I think it really just depends on the person. You know, if, if that's something that you can do sustainably, then I would say go for it. But I think most people would struggle to do the two days fasting every single week. Um, what I've, I've done, you know, for a pretty long stretch, I was doing like a 6-1. So I would eat six days, I would fast one day of the week. Um, and, and one way, if you do want to do it like that, I recommend um, just skipping dinner one night and then skip, you know, breakfast and lunch the next day, and then you can eat a dinner the next day. So it's not even like you 
you don't feel like you're doing a full day of fasting because most of that was sleeping. Um, so that's one thing that I have personally done and, and I did it for quite a while. Question. Yeah. When fasting, was that water or did you do juice as well? Uh, just water. Yeah. Wow. So for many, for many years, I fasted one day a week as well, because you cool. know, we're at birth. Yeah. Um, but I used to do juice every Monday. And listen, what, what, yeah, just continue with your final thoughts on that. And then I'll say something. Yeah. I mean, that was pretty much it. So I think, you know, whatever is going to be sustainable for somebody, you know, it's going to be different for everybody. Some people don't want to fast at all. And I, I get that and I understand. So just eat a whole foods plant based diet with mostly raw fruits and vegetables. Um, but if you do want to fast, um, you know, I think doing one day a week is really sustainable in my experience. Um, but if you can do two days and, and that works for you and you feel good doing it, um, then yeah, I think uh, that can work for somebody too. Yeah, I agree. And then somebody coach Jen, she had a great point. Depends where you are on your fasting journey or your yeah your healthy journey okay and um the person is if they're already raw vegan it shouldn't be a problem oh sherry's here hey sherry yeah more is here <laughs> oh my god wow okay sherry um i'm gonna see you soon sherry's here in florida um so um yeah i would say the same thing that matt just said and coach jen um if you're eating raw vegan for six months sure go for it if you're not eating the way you want to eat yet don't go for it yet don't do don't go um past the point to which you might fall off the diet yeah. because if you want real results you're gonna have to do it long enough for a sustainable amount of time to see those results and you're never gonna see them if you fall off and i just wanted to say um that the universe is gonna test you okay so this might be a test where like okay you want to skip to the next level right you want to do the fasting but you might not be ready okay and so the universe is testing you all right do you really want this because if you really want this, if you want to change your health and your life and inspire millions of people to also do the same, then you're going to have to go slow and steady and stick to a routine for a long amount of time to see the results. And um, I, I said the universe is going to test you because it always does. When you start doing affirmations, when you start changing your diet, when you start a different way of living, the universe goes, okay, let me see if you really say, you, if you really want what you say you want. Okay. And so with me, the universe has tested me recently because I recently put myself out there and said I had perfect skin. And then I woke <laughs> up this today, Matt, and I had like a breakout for the first time oh, in, no. in like years. And I don't have makeup in my house, so I had to go on live without makeup. And it's right in the middle of my forehead. And I was like, <laughs> damn, universe. But you know what? I'm not going to go out and buy makeup. I'm going to pass the test. Everything is a test in life, guys, okay? So if the so somebody asked, Matt, and this will be the last question um, because I know you have to go. You don't have a lot of time. But somebody wanted to know how can they start eating raw when the rest of their family does not? And I would say, you know, this is a great test from the universe for you to get mentally stronger, mentally tougher. And so, um, you know, what would you say, Matt, to somebody who's living with a family Maybe it's their husband or wife and kids, or maybe it's their mom and dad and siblings, and they're eating really unhealthy food and they want to eat healthy, but it's really hard. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's going to depend a lot on the, on what their situation is. Like, I know it's much harder for if it's a child or, you know, if you still live with your parents and they're providing for you um, and, and you want to be raw, but they don't want to, you know, they buy the groceries and everything. So, um, the, the best thing that I think somebody can do is one, if they're open to it, educate them about the benefit, you know, watch documentaries together. You know, if you guys do family things, then have like a, a movie night and watch, you know, Food Inc. Or watch um, um, uh, whatever the other good documentaries are. Game, game, game or, Changers, yeah. Or Cowspiracy or Seaspiracy or... Right. Uh, Eating is such a good one, Matt. Have you seen yeah. this one? Seaspiracy? Yeah, I saw that one. Eating, the one eating. Oh, eating. No, I haven't seen that one. It's with Dr. My number one celebrity crush, Michael Clapper. Uh. Uh, and uh, this is a great documentary. It's right underground. It's called Eating the Third Edition. So everybody go check that out. Cool. Yeah, I will. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say. I would say if, if they're open to it, educate them, you know, watch some documentaries together. Um, but if they're not open to it, then 
you just have to do the best you can do while you're in that situation until you can change your circumstances. Um, so if, if somebody else is getting the food, just try and get them to get you enough like fruits that you can enjoy. You know, if you can't be a hundred percent, don't, don't get too down on yourself, but just do the very best you can in the situation that you're in. And hopefully the more they see you doing well, eating more fruits and vegetables, they'll want to do it or they'll want to get you more fruits and vegetables to help you do what you're trying to do. Um, and just go with it that way. So true. And, you know, Coach Jen had another good point. You know, she had another great point, Matt. She said, I just make good food and they all want more. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, what? see, if, if you're the one making the food, that's, you're, you're in a good spot, so. Yes, okay, I promise last question. So 40 wants to know, I don't know his exact question. Uh-oh. But... <laughs> He's trying to make it awkward here. <laughs> so um, he wants to know, he said, please run my question by Matt. His question is about seed retention, uh -huh. working with raw veganism, but I don't know. Well, okay, sorry. How would raw veganism work with practicing seed retention? Mm. All right, hello, X-rated here, guys. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, uh, I've practiced that myself. So I, you know, I don't see, I don't know why it would, um, have any sort of conflicting, you know, it shouldn't, they should, they should go well together. I will say, so I'm going to keep this PG and everything, but it's my, a family. <laughs> exactly. So my hormones since going on a raw vegan diet have been so much more balanced. You know, I was way more influenced by my hormones before I got into this lifestyle. Right. So, you know, I thought about sex a lot more than I do now. And it's not that I don't think about it now. I'm just, it's much more of a controllable energy and I can use it in a healthy way. Right. And so if you want to do something like seed retention, you know, it seems like there could be some benefits. I, I haven't looked that much into it, but I have experimented with it just to, you know, I like to experiment with things I hear about. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's um, a great thing to do. And it goes very well in my experience with being on a raw vegan lifestyle, so. Okay, last question, Matt, I'm so sorry. Because I forgot, and she sent in a question earlier this week and I really want to answer it. And she's yeah. here, what to do if you are allergic to some fruit and vegetables like bananas and nightshades? What would mm. you do, Anne? Yeah, great question. So that I actually wanted to look into, I'm not sure. You know, I, I actually haven't coached or helped many people with that situation. Um, I've heard that people can have, um, you know, sensitivities to some of these different fruits and vegetables. But, you know, just what comes to my mind without really doing any research into it on my, my part. Um, but there is a, a new book by Dr. Bolsowitz, his new uh, fiber fueled cookbook. He talks about histamine intolerance. And I, I wonder if it might have a connection with, with that sort of thing. And he goes into how to overcome that. I haven't read that yet, so I'm not sure what he says. But my first thought would be, if you, if you are sensitive to a food that should, you know, by all means be healthy for you um, and is a natural food for your body, then I would say, you know, and, and I know not everybody is into fasting, but I would say your body has some obstructions within it that is causing it to not be able to function and utilize those foods that you're eating that should otherwise be very healthy foods for you. So if your body is malfunctioning in a way like that, I would always go personally to fasting or to clean, a juice cleanse to help the body to start to remove some of those obstructions that are causing the issues with these otherwise healthy foods. So maybe eliminate those foods from your diet for just a short time and then do a little bit mm -hmm. of cleansing to see if that helps and then slowly reintroduce them and see if you have better luck with eating those, those foods. Yeah, great answer. Irrational Fasting is probably my favorite book on fasting by Arnold. Yeah. Um, and so I just wanna say real quick that I had an allergy to apricots when I was a kid and I might've had a lot more allergies, but I never ate fruit and vegetables. But I remember eating apricots and breaking out in hives all over mm. my body. 
And I went about 20 years or more without eating apricots. But as I was raw vegan a few years ago, um, somebody was eating apricots at a Fruit Luck. And I was like, I want to try. And I was so scared. So I took one home. And later that day, I tried it, just a little piece. And, you know, I waited an hour. Nothing happened. Then I ate the whole thing. Nothing happened. And now I can eat apricots, no problem. Uh, what you said is interesting about histamines. I've read that a lot of um, allergies might be toward, towards pesticides mm, yeah. and, and GMOs and things like that, as opposed to the actual fruit. And so I'm not telling you to try things you're allergic to, but I am saying from my experience, and I've seen it with other people, my roommate used to be allergic to lychees. Now she can eat them. And not just allergic, but she was disgusted and nauseated by the smell and taste of lychees. But now she can eat them, perhaps because she's a lot healthier by going vegan and things like that. And so let's start, we have to start to realize that um, sometimes it's, uh, it, it might be the pesticides and as our bodies get cleaner, like Matt said, and healthier, we might be able to absorb. And um, you know, remember when you're having an allergic reaction, it's your body releasing things that needed to be released. It might, it's not you, always the fruit that you ate, you know? So yeah. that's, a, that's another thing that we could look at and then jonah sunshine said that he would co-host with me um i already have a co-host boo there you go <laughs> um okay so we'll let matt go thank you so much matt for joining us again and um i will definitely i'm looking forward to next week and i just want to say thank you so much to everyone that joined us yes. uh, on live and here and sent in questions please continue to send in questions i will write them down we will answer as many as we can and um, if we didn't get to your question, please DM me and I will make sure and answer it next week. I thank you so much, Matt. And yes, I will see you next Saturday. All right. Can't wait. See you Bye. then. Bye, everybody. Bye.